my name is Peter Raymer, and today I'm going to show you how to create and call a custom service into Microsoft Dynamics 365. We need five different components in our Visual Studio project to accomplish this. First, we need a request object that is going to contain the information we'd like to send into Dynamics 365. We need a response object that is going to contain the information that we're going to return from Dynamics 365. Then we need a service. The service is going to run the code to read from the request object, run some operation, then populate the response object and return that back to the calling program. Then next we need a service object. This exposes the method on our service class um, to an outside program. And then lastly, we need a service group. A group is a way that we can organize our different services. Okay, so let's start with the service class. We can create a new class by right-clicking on our project and selecting Add, New Item, and then scrolling and selecting cl Class. I've already done this. So I'll cancel out. Um, the main thing that we need with our class is we need this attribute at the top. So we have square bracket data contract attribute. That needs to be right above our class definition. Then we can list our variable that we want to contain data um, that we're going to pass into the system. And then we need a parm method. Uh, that takes in and uh, gets and sets the variable. The other important thing is that we have this data member attribute at the top of our parm method. This text in here is going to be the text that we need to pass in as JSON um, from our calling program. So this could be named differently than your local variable or parm method, um, but for simplicity's sake, um, it's nice if they match. So in this case, we're just passing in the data area ID or a company as a request object. The next thing we need is the response class. So again, create another class and put the data contract attribute on top uh, above the definition of the class. Uh, in this class, I have three variables. One is a Boolean um, named success. And this is going to indicate whether our operation was successful or not. If it was not successful, I also have an error message, which is a string where we can put in an error message. And then I also have a debug message. Um, and in this case, this is what we're going to populate with a value. Again, we'll need three PARM methods, one for each variable that we're wanting to set. So one for error message with the data member error message, um, another with the data member success, and lastly, uh, one with the data member debug message. We can have as many uh, variables as we want, and later I'll show you how to have some more complex information um, in your request and response. Now we get to the most interesting piece. This is the service class itself. So go ahead and create another class. This class does not need the attribute on top of it. Uh, we just need a method and the method needs to take a request object um, which is the same type as the request object we just created. And then it also needs to respond with the response object that we just created. So in this case I'm going to take my request object and I'm going to call my variable to get the value out of that class. In this case, it's a data area ID. So I'm going to pull that out and call change company to switch to the company I'd like to perform this operation for. Next, I'm going to instantiate my response class so I can populate it with some information. I'm going to call parm debug message and just pass it the message hello world. 
you can imagine here is when I could uh, get the inventory for an item or I could create a sales order I could do whatever operation I want here um, specifically this is helpful when you're running code that needs to calculate a value um, a value that isn't stored in a table itself if it was stored in a table itself I could possibly use a data entity to get that information back out I'm also going to say parm success is true if it got to this point in um, the code. I have a try catch wrapped around my whole process just to kind of show this as an example. If there was an error that occurred during this operation, I could set parm success to false and I could set my parm error message to the, the string error message of what my error was. Then finally, I'm going to return my response. So that's kind of it. You can imagine this can become way more complicated, um, but this is a very, very basic service method. You can name your method whatever you want. I decided to call mine create because later I'm going to make this create some data, um, but you can call it whatever you need to. The next piece that we need is the service object. So if you right click and say add new item, we can scroll down and you'll see that there is an object of type service and service group. In this case, we're going to create an object of type service. When I open that, it looks like this. Um, and then I can actually go down and select my class that I would like to be associated with this service object. So you need to go to the properties and set the class to your service class and then also give it an external name and I recommend naming this external name either the same as your class or uh, something very similar um, so that it's easy to remember and you know what to call from the external program. After you've set these two properties you can come to this service operation and you're going to want to right click and select new service operation. I've already done that so it creates a new node right here. Once you select this node, you need to come down to the properties and set the method um, for your service. I only have one method on my service class called create, so I'm gonna select that, and then I'm gonna set the name to be create as well. The, this name is what's used by the external program to call uh, and actually run this method. If you had named your method something else, this is where you would put um, that other method name. Here you can create multiple service operations even in the same class. In my case, I only have one method in my class. Lastly, we need to create a service group. So again, if you right click and say add new item, we can scroll down and find the service group right here. I've already created one, so I'll just go ahead and open it. Inside this service group, we just need to add the service or services that we want to have contained in this group. This is really for organization purposes. So if I right click, I can say new service. And once I select new service, it's going to give me a new node. I'll select that node. And then you need to come down and set the properties to the name of your service object. So in my case, my service object uh, is here, and I'm going to put that in the service node or service property as well as the name there. Next, I will show you how you can call this service. First, we go into Postman, and we need to get the authorization token. I had shown you in our previous blog how you can do that. Um, and then here is us actually calling the service operation. We need a post request. The first thing we need is the URL for the Dynamics 365 environment. Then next we need the keyword API slash services slash, and then we'll put the name of our service group slash the name of our service object slash and then the name of our service operation in this case create um, then we pass in the request just like this you'll notice it's got underscore requests this matches 
the name of the parameter that I'm passing into uh, create. So if I had named that parameter something different, I would need to change that to be um, the text so that they match. Then I'm going to pass in the variable. Data area ID is going to match the data member text that I have on my request object. Then I have a colon, and then in between the quotes is my value for that um, that member variable. Uh, Dynamics 365 is going to serialize this JSON request object and be able to store it into our request class so that when the create method is called, that class object is populated with that value. Um, this is a Hyper-V, so I can't actually run this particular example right here, but if I were able to click send, I'd be able to see in my response the uh, three values that we set, the success, the error message should be blank, and then the debug message would be hello world. Thanks so much for watching.